Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Okay, hold. Make up your own mind, brothers and sisters. Give me one second, brother. What's your question, brother? Crossing the street. What's your question? Right, yeah, we have time. We're out here all day, every Sabbath. That's right. We got time, brother. Talk to me about the Nat Turner Rebellion. Let me see how what about steep, it. Let, how steep the history are you? What's the Great okay. Awakening, brother? Okay. What, what, about, about, it. what, what, what is it? What, what, what would you like to it? know about the Nat Turner yeah. Rebellion? Yeah. What is the Great Awakening and how is it tied to the Nat Turner Rebellion? That's what I want you to tell me and how you're a Christian here today. Talk to okay. me, brother. Well, we're not. Well, here's the thing. If you're talking about the New or Old Testament, it's all an Abrahamic religion. We could talk about the major three: Basis, Judaism, leave. Christianity. Islam, right? Because we we're about going somewhere. I thought you were talking about, about, about Nat Turner's rebellion. Yeah, exactly, which is why you're the type of Christian you are now, the type of Abrahamic religion you are now. Talk to me about it. Okay, which one do you want me to answer? Right, any of them. You sure? Any of them. Are you going to give me something else? You've been talking for a long time. Talk to me about what I just asked you, brother. Okay, so now, give me that in Judah, Judah chapter 8. Okay. Judah chapter 8, I think it's verse 14 about the rebellion. Read that, Judah 8, 14. Judah chapter 8, verse 14. For ye cannot find the depth of the heart of men. Neither can ye perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can ye search out God that have made all these things and know his mind? Wait a minute. Because you don't know the mindset of man, how can you fully know the mindset of God? Because I want you to see the spirit that brother was rolling in. He didn't ask a question. He made a statement and left before the answer could be given him. So, brothers are not really seeking God. They're not. That's they're right. seeking to be deep. Right. They want to show you that they're deep. Listen, that stuff doesn't impress us. Because guess what? Rebellion, slave rebellions are biblical. Slavery is biblical. The children of Israel suffering is biblical. Right. We being the children of Israel, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, it's biblical. Right. So we're going to give you the answer. We've tried everything else. Right. We've tried slave revolts. We've tried picking up guns with the Black Panther. We've tried marching. We've tried uh, 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 sit-ins or, 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 or what do you call that? Um, when you, when you uh, protest. We've tried all of that. The one thing we have not tried, brother and sister, it's keeping God's laws. That's, right, right. That's the one thing we have. I want you to really think about that. The brother right here in the white shirt. Think about that. We're bringing out commandments of God. Everything I just mentioned, we've actually tried it. Am I right? We've, we've been marching for 60 years. Right. Has that worked? It really hasn't. It really hasn't. What we've done is, don't, don't mistake crumbs for strides. Right. We must save little crumbs for strides. Because we march now for equality, right? That's what we march for, right? But do the other nations really want equality? I'm going to show you something. If they want equality, they're going to be okay with this scripture right here. Revelation 13 and 9. I want y'all to hear this. Because if they're marching with you for equality... They must want equality of all facets of your life. Right. Not just your prosperity, but also when you're downtrodden as well. Let's see that. Read. Revelation chapter 13 verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. We all have ears here. So get the understanding of what co what's coming out. Read. He that leadeth into captivity. Were we led into captivity? Well, I mean... You know. We, we weren't led into captivity? It says, he that leadeth into captivity, were we led into captivity? It's called, captivity is another word for slavery. So, were we led into captivity? Yes? Okay, so it says, he that leads you into captivity, read. 
shall go into. I'm sorry, say again. I said we were taken. Maybe oh, we well, well, here's the thing. Maybe, maybe the verbiage is. Clear. Okay, well, here's the thing. We were taken, and that's what the officer brought out earlier. But what you don't know about, or might not know about, is called a slave train. What they do is they shackle all the slaves together by the neck, yokes of iron. And they lead you from one selling point to the next. When we were on the west coast of Africa during the trans-sub-Saharan slave trade, sometimes they made us walk for 500 miles, chained together. So we were led into captivity as well. So you're right, taken, yes. You said the verbiage might be a little different, but when you know the actual depths of slavery, yes, there was a leading process. The oppressor led the way, and we had to walk calmly and orderly behind him. You know what's funny? You see how out of order that brother was? When we were in chains, we could not be out of order. You see the problem? Now that they take the chains off, the brother and sister said, I could disrespect anybody I want. I could say what I want. I could disrupt anyone's forum. But I guarantee you, if it was the white man standing here, he wouldn't say a word. Bring it up. Right. Breathe. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. What does God say? We serve a just God. Those who were led into captivity. Don't, excuse me. Those who led people into captivity. God says they're going to go in captivity themselves. So you march for equality. Hey, I got a question. That's, okay, let me, let me finish my point. So you march for equality. The other nations have to be okay with that form of equality. We went into slavery. It should only be right that they go into slavery. That's equality. But, but when we march, we ain't marching for that. Come on, we're not marching for that. God says, you know what? I'm going to show you what justice is. Go ahead, brother. What's your question? Yeah, like white people, even the ones that get saved and believe in God, they, they going to make it to the kingdom of heaven, right? It's just going to be oh. the Jews. So he said, white people that believe and get saved. Uh-huh. They going to be part of the, like, the uh, people that's going in slavery. Or okay. Forgive them for very them. good. Good question. Brother asked a very good question. Let me have Isaiah 14, verse 1. Bring it out. Bring it out. Because what we have is two things are going to happen in the time of Christ's return. There's going to be deliverance or destruction. That's right. Talk about for us, because we are God's chosen people. We are the Israelites. Right. Two things, destruction or deliverance. That's right. What you do after hearing this word is going to determine what side you're on. I want y'all to really, really meditate on that. Because we, he brought out the laws about the Sabbath, right? If you go and break God's Sabbath, you've made your choice. You want destruction rather than deliverance. If you keep God's Sabbath holy as he instructed, you're on the side of deliverance. That's that simple, clear? Good. Read. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Now the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. It's very, very, very specific. He had mercy on Jacob. Jacob is the forefather of the Israelites. That's right, that's right. He's, his name was changed to Israel in Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. Right. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Right. He had 12 sons. We are the descendants of those 12 sons. That's, right. that's why we are the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. We're the 12, with 12 children coming out of Jacob. Read. And will yet choose Israel. So he's going to have mercy on Jacob and going to choose everybody. And will yet choose Israel. Is he choosing everyone? <laughs> Brother right here, ask the question. Y'all could, could come a little closer. Hey, pull these signs back. Let them come out the sun. Pull the signs back, right, son. Right, 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 right. Pull the signs back. Y'all could come closer, man. Get out the sun. Pull them back. All praises to the Lord. All praise for a little bit of shade. <laughs> Come on. And will yet choose Israel. So the brother asks a question. Is he going to choose everybody? Yeah, I just want to be clear because in the Bible it says, you know, people are all racist and tongues. Okay. Folk, okay. God in heaven, so. All right. Good. So here's, I'm, I'm asking what we just read. He said he's going to have mercy on Jacob, meaning the descendants of Jacob, and he's going to yet choose Israel. Is he going to choose everyone? You said, yeah? Let's read it again from the top. Bring it out. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Who is he going to choose? Bring it out. Israel. Simple, right? Go ahead. And set them in their own land. Why the 
Israelites going to get set in their own land? We read it to you earlier. Where did we go on ships? We came from, we were taken from Africa. America, Europe, right. America. So we were scattered into other people's land, the lands of the oppressors, correct? So God said, it's going to be a people that I'm going to choose that have been scattered everywhere that need their own land. I'm going to set them in their own land, right? Read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So strangers are the, in one context, are the other nations. So the children of Israel are going to be set in their own land by who? By God. By God. God is going to set them in their own land. And the strangers or the other nations are going to come along too, right? That's what we just heard, right? Well, let's see. Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Why? Because all the knowledge and understanding God is going to distribute through Christ, the apostles, and the 12 tribes. So that for their understanding of when the Passover is, when the new moons are, they're going to have to get it from the children of Israel. Right? right. Read. And the people shall take them. What, what are the Israelites going to do? Shall take them. That's the verbiage you mentioned earlier. You said it doesn't say take. We were taken. Well, guess what? The roles are about to flip. The verbiage is, is more than su sufficient here. He said, they will take them. Take who? Take those strangers, those other nations, and do what? And bring them to their place. Just like we were done here. They took us and brought us here. Correct? Guess what? The roles are going to change. Going right. to, the tide is going Read to flip. Right. Read. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. Hold on a second. So you mentioned the white folks that believe in God and get saved. We just read what they're being saved for. Bring it up. Read that part again. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. What are they being saved for? Slavery. My mellow, my man. Yeah. See how simple that was? Because guess what? Salvation. The, the, the ability to rule is only set for the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because we've been servants as long as we can remember, correct? We've been servants. Our grandparents, great-great-grandparents have been serving since we touched down in this place. When does that time of serv servitude end? It's in the coming of the Lord. Bring it up. Those days of servitude are over. Right. So the brother question was, what are they going to make it to the kingdom of heaven? Of course, every society needs a ruling class and a servile class, do they not? That's right. We're the servile class now, correct? It's not going to be that way in the day of the Lord. That's right. That's right. They will be the servants, and we will be in rulership, finally. Right. We'll be back in rulership, that's what we came from. We came from rulership, but we were brought low because of our sins. Y'all right. Right. understand that? Does that answer your question, brother? Yeah, I had okay. another question. Okay, go ahead. What's your other question? You say Hispanics are supposed to be a part of the truth. Right. Uh, 12 tribes. Yes. But they don't really look at themselves on the same you know, level. I agree. They call us niggas just like the white people do. <laughs> I agree. Give me that in, in they, Isaiah. Vex and and another thing, if, uh, you know, the Spaniards conquered them. Right. And they descended. All right, sister. They was black at our, first, right? Our address is on, the, is on the flyer and our contact information as well. With a Hispanic black at first, and they got conquered by the Spaniards and turned by okay. the color right now. Good, good. Okay, so I'll answer both questions. Uh -huh. You ask how they, they look at us as Negro. Negroes, uh -huh. and they were conquered, and did they mix with the people and get lighter, lighter? Uh -huh. We'll answer both your questions. Now, you notice we do things in order. Just like when a brother came, we're going to answer this question. Just let's do it orderly. He has two questions. We're going to answer both right now to edify everyone. Y'all understand? That's how we deal. Read. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 13. Bring it the envy also of Ephraim shall depart. So in the day of the Lord, as we just mentioned, we're going to be put into our own land. Things are going to happen. God says the envy of Ephraim is going to leave. So who is Ephraim? I'm going to explain it. Ephraim is the top tribe of the northern kingdom. So-called Hispanics. If you look down, you see Manessa, Cubans, Simeon, Dominicans, Zebulon, Guatemala to Panama, so on and so forth. But the top tribe out of all of those is Ephraim. So when he's talking to saying Ephraim, it means the northern kingdom. Their envy of these three, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, which is African-American, West Indians, and Haitians. The envy that they have 
is going to finally be over in the day of the Lord. Because what the Lord is going to show us is we are actually the same people. That's right. It's, it's, it's hard for us to accept them sometimes, and it's hard for them to accept us sometimes. Because we've been divided by, by geographical location, through language, through complexion. We look at them, oh no, they can't be the same because they not they don't have this, this amount of melanin. We we measure melanin like we scientists. We ain't no daggone scientists. Right? No. But we they they use a perfect method of slavery called divide and conquer. You know? God says that the 12 tribes of Israel are as the sand of the sea and the stars of heaven. When you put them into the mix, it all makes sense now why they can't number us. You, may, you understand what I'm saying? God says we can't be numbered because what most of the slaves went to where? What's, what's the number one place majority of the slaves went? Who knows? South America. Where? Brazil. My mellow, my man. See, y'all did some studying. Good. So most slaves went to Brazil than anywhere else. So there's a stark difference in Brazil between light and dark. Just like here. Y'all understand that? Only difference in Brazil, they all speak Portuguese. But there's still a divide there. There's a divide in Haiti. Haiti and Dominican Republic share the same island. But there's a divide because of what? Language. Y'all see the point? It's the same thing here. We are the same people. But let's see what God says. Read. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Uh -huh. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. So Ephraim, the, 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 the so-called Hispanic and Native American tribes, finally will no longer envy so-called African Americans. Right? Read. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Remember I told you the hate was both ways? The dislike was both ways? Judah will finally stop telling northern kingdom tribes or Hispanics that you're not our people. We're not the same. God says at some point it's going to take him to have to intervene. Because that thing is spiritual. Yeah, we say, oh, well, yeah, they don't have the same amount of melanin. They got this, whatever the case may be. We have our differences physically. But that's, that, that difference is deep down in our spirit. God says there's going to be a day when they finally stop having division between the two. Y'all right. understand that? Because guess what? The curses that we've been going over, that we went into slavery on ships, yokes of iron around our necks, that's how we know we're the children of Israel, right? That's right. What we don't know is, because you seem to have studied history, that happened to Hispanics and Native Americans first, before it happened to us. That's right. It happened to them in beginning 1492, when they were taken from the Americas. Well, first it was Hispaniola, which is the Dominican Republic. This, the, the Native Americans or, Hispa or Native Indians were taken on ships by Columbus, yokes of iron put around their necks, and they were shipped to Spain. Right. So let's go to Deuteronomy 28, and let's see if it fits them. Bring it out. Right? Bring it out. The book of Deuteronomy chapter The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 bring it And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships So Egypt is synonymous with bondage or slavery So God says one of the curses because we broke his commandments He's going to put the Israelites into slavery by way of on ships Did that happen to us so-called blacks? It did Right? But what we don't study is it happens to so-called Hispanics first. Y'all understand that? What we're showing you is that the curses that prove where the children of Israel also fits them. We know that for a fact. But because of the envy and the hatred between the two groups, we're like, nah, that can't be. They speak Spanish. They have uh, straight hair. Complexion does not make you an Israelite. Teach, yeah. It's the blood in your veins and the curses of this Bible. That's right. right. You understand that? And we're going to read that. Read. Hosea chapter 7 verse 8. Bring it out. Ephraim, he have mixed himself among the people. Uh -huh. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Very good. Very good. Remember, Ephraim is who? I see you get it already, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So Ephraim, so-called Hispanics and Native Americans, right? It says Ephraim... The, the so-called Native Americans and Hispanics mixed themselves among the people who they were scattered amongst. 
So where did, where did I tell you their ships just went? Right? To Spain. Oh, okay. Native, the, uh, the Arawaks, the Tainos, they were put on slave ships and shipped to Spain. Who's over there? Caucasian Spaniards. Right. So when the Native Americans get over there, what's going to happen to their complexion? As they get mixed, lighter. they're going to get lighter. You, you understand that? Make it says that Ephraim mixed himself with the people. He is like a cake unturned. How many of y'all ever made a pancake? Right? When you pour the batter in, the batter is what color? Yellow. It's very light, right? Very, very light. But let's say you don't flip that cake. What is that bottom side on the grill going to be? On the grill going to be? Bring it out. It's going to be what? Brown. It's going to be dark, right? Extremely dark. It says the tribe of Ephraim, the northern kingdom tribes, are like a cake not turned. Some are going to be like the top side of that pancake. Some are going to be like the bottom side of that pancake. Very dark to very, very light. That's why we teach and show our brothers and sisters it ain't about complexion. Because God got complexion covered. Y'all understand that? Do you understand now? I understand, but I got one yes, more. Come on, one man. last question. Yeah, no problem. If, uh, you know, they turn lighter through mixing with uh, Caucasian people. Does that still make them Jews when they say in the Bible, yo, nation is considered to be through your father? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if their father is white, yes. how can they be? Here? Very good. Very good. Now, here's what I want you to understand. And give me that numbers. He's, it's, through, it's through your father. Numbers 1 and 18. Let's read it. To confirm what the brother said. Read. Numbers chapter 1 verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigree. They declared their type, their genealogy. How? After their families, by the house of their fathers. So you are 100% correct. So I'm going to ask you now. Is, are those who, like you mentioned, have Caucasian fathers, are they Israelites? No. Nope. They're not. Are mm -hmm. so-called blacks that have Caucasian fathers, are they Israelites? No. Nope. So this word ain't for them. Bring it up. <laughs> Y'all understand that? It ain't for them. But hold on. Give me um, Hebrews 8. I mean, Romans 8, 16. No. Romans 8 and 16. Let's see. Because here's the thing. Oh, before you do that, give me Job 8 and 8 before you go there. I'm going to show you something. Job 8 and 8. Here's what everyone, so as you see, we're on the corner teaching. We don't know who got white fathers or not. God told us to go to the chief place of concourse and teach his people. Right, that's right. We're teaching the descendants of the slave trade. That's right. Now, when you think about it, there's a lot of raping that went on in slavery. But God says, in, I think it's in Psalms 38. They, their, their lineage will be cut off. A lot of times we give them too much credit. They're the ones in fertility clinics right now. They're the ones that need help to have babies. It ain't us. We popping them out like this. That's right. That's right. right? We don't have those fertility issues as a people, right? So here's what happens. There's a, the people are confused. I don't know. I think my great-great-grandmother was raped. My great-great-grandfather. Listen, we don't go by that. But here's what you should do. Read. Job chapter 8 verse 8 For inquire I pray thee Of the former age And prepare thyself to the search Of their fathers So everyone that hears this word Has to search out their fathers That's for your salvation's sake Because guess what If your father Is Caucasian as you just mentioned You're not an Israelite According to God Because it's by the seed of the father So for instance if I take an apple seed you know? and I plant it right here, what's going to grow? Apple. An apple tree. If I take that same seed and plant it over in China, what's going to grow? Apple. An apple tree. Does the land matter? No, it doesn't. So whatever your father is, the father plants the seed. The father determines what that child's lineage is. Right. Y'all understand? So for brothers and sisters that went over to, were taken to Spain on slavery, that were taken by, the women were taken by white men or Caucasian men, those children were not Israelites, right? But those Native, Native American men who lay with white women, what are those children? Native American Hebrew. They're, they're Israelites. And that, you see the point? So the mixing doesn't always have to come from the father, but the complexion can come from the mother as well. You see the point? So that lineage is still pure. Well, it's defiled because you lay with a heathen, but the line of Israel is still there. 
You, all, you understand that now? Good. Hebrews 8. I mean, Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. So the spirit that those brothers and sisters, no matter where they are, if we're teaching, if we're teaching in Africa, guess what? Some could be mixed with the seed of Ham. It's not just Caucasians. Y'all understand that? So what I'm saying is somebody could be here listening that's as dark as me, but could be Hamites. You see the point? Don't just think about mixing on the sense of Caucasians. Mixing is with all the nations. Y'all understand that? Mixing happened with all the nations. Read. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's right. So the spirit is what's going to determine. Because like I mentioned, there's raping that happened in slavery, right? But your spirit bears witness with the curses of this Bible, right? God says in Matthew about planting the wheat and tares together. Guess what? There's going to be some who look like Israel, but they're not Israel. Right. They might be Hamites. They might be Moabites. They might be Japheth. They might be uh, 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 Edomites. That's not our, that's not our job to, 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 to make that decision. God says plant them both together. And let what? Let the angels come and separate them. That's only an act of God because we get fooled by complexion. You understand that now, brother? Complexion, and we ain't teaching complexion. We teaching that y'all the sons and daughters of God. Right. It's up to you to search out your forefathers to find out, yes, I'm actually an Israelite. My forefathers did go through slavery. Yes, I'm a descendant of that. These curses affect me today. These curses are generational. It's, listen, it's not going, how old are you, brother? You're 21. Guess what? It's not, the curses don't stop with you. It's going to trickle down to your children. Your children's children. It's always going to be here. And that is proof that we are the children of Israel. That's right. Y'all understand? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.